uh, we now look to our uh, Molkai's test of sphericity and um, this this test um, should be should be non-significant if we're to assume that the collection that the condition of sphericity has been met so the output shows that the uh, Molkai's test for the tutor data uh, here and the important column is the one containing the significance value which is this guy here so 0 0.043 is less than our critical value of 0 0.05 so this tells us basically that we can accept that the variances of the differences between the levels are significantly different so in other words the assumption of sphericity has been violated so um, how should we proceed well we're going to keep going through our output uh, and SPSS um, produces three corrections based upon the estimates of sphericity. Uh, these are advocated by the uh, greenhouse um, geyser, the Hungfeldt, and uh, both of these estimates give rise to a correction factor that is applied to the degrees of freedom used to assess the observed F ratio. So the greenhouse geyser correction, it varies between one over k minus one, where k is the number of repeated measures conditions and one. So the closer that um, epsilon is to one, um, where are we here? Sorry, uh, we're talking about epsilon here. Uh, the more homogeneous the variances of differences, and hence the closer the data are to being um, spherical. So in a situation in which uh, there are four conditions, as with our data, the lower limit of epsilon will be 1 over, so 1 divided by 4 minus 1, um, or 0.33. And this is known as the lower bound estimate of sphericity. And we can see that that's actually been calculated for us right here. Um, and the calculated value of epsilon um, in the output here is 0.558 and this is closer to the lower limit of 0.33 than it is to the upper limit of 0.1 sorry upper limit of 1 um, and it therefore represents a substantial deviation from sphericity and we'll see how those values are used in the next uh, section but I hope that that all makes sense. So now we go to the main ANOVA um, table which is this one right here and we can basically read this table the same way as a between groups ANOVA so there's a sum of squares for the repeated measures effect of um, tutor and this tells us how much of the total variability is explained by the experimental effect and we note here that this value is 554.125 and this is the model sum of squares basically that were calculated in task 1. Uh, there's also uh, an error term uh, which is the amount of unexplained variation across the conditions of the repeated measures variable and this is the residual sum of squares that was calculated earlier also in task 1 and we note that this value here is um, 1048.3 Seven, five. So um, Field explains uh, that these sum of squares are converted into mean squares by dividing by the degrees, degrees of freedom and that um, was all explained um, previously and for more explanation please refer to Field. Uh, but we just want to say that um, as with the between groups ANOVA um, our test statistic represents the ratio of systematic variance to unsystematic variance. So the F value of, um, of uh, 184.71 divided by 49.92 equals 370. So um, this figure comes from here. And 18471 comes from here. So this figure divided by this figure here gives us our F, which is 3.7. And so this is then compared against a critical value uh, for 3 and 21 degrees of freedom. 
and SPSS dis displays the exact significance level for the F ratio, which in this case here is 0 0.028. And this is significant because it's less than the criterion value of 0 0.05. So therefore we can conclude that there was a significant difference between the marks awarded by the four lecturers. However, this main test does not tell us which lectures actually differed from each other based on their marking. So um, we'll just stop it here and we'll continue on to part three in a moment. Thank you.